Hi everyone, um, so I'm back with my final flip through of my Canadian series. Um, so I've done the front covers um, of them all. So they look very nice, aesthetically pleasing together. Um, but I'm still not sure if I'm going to stamp some other little bits before I sort of um, laminate the front so it doesn't get too um, damaged. But I might stamp a few little bits on. Um, I just wasn't too sure about it. So I just kept them quite plain. Um, but I do like how they are actually, to be fair, just on their own. Because I like the big maple leaf and obviously the little Canada flag down there. But yeah, so they are all done. Um, they're some of my favourite albums, actually. Um, I absolutely love these. I love doing them. However, you know, I am ready to move on now. Um, I've been doing these since February. So it's nice to be able to move on to a different theme. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to carry on my scrapbooking um, goal because I have quite a few to get through. So yeah, so I'll just go through. So obviously the Vancouver and Canadian Rockies part one's already been done. So Canadian Rockies part two, this was predominantly um, Jasper. So when we left Banff in the part one, um, we drove up the Icefield Parkway um, up to Jasper and we did some bits and pieces up there then we came back and then we went back to Calgary um, via Canmore and um, we went to the Wolf Dog Sanctuary so yeah we did loads in this one um, and it's just nice to be able to split them because it would have got really chunky otherwise um, so yeah I do need to trim down these because they're just slightly too big um, I just need to trim down the sides but um, I will laminate them so they don't get too damaged on that side so this is our first page of the second one so this was us driving or going to drive the Icefield Parkway um, we did have Tim Hortons quite a lot on the trip because obviously it's Canadian um, it was quite cheap it was really good for breakfast and stuff and Joe really liked the coffee there so we had that quite often um, so our driving up to the Icefield up the Icefield Parkway didn't go to plan um, we actually hit a snowstorm, which was very random because this is the middle of June. Um, so we didn't expect a snowstorm <laughs> um, then. However, when we got to the little gate um, to sort of start the journey, the lady in there said just to drive really carefully. Luckily, we had a four by four that had, you know, different uh, driving settings and stuff like that. So we were a little bit, had a bit of advantage with that. I think if we had just a normal car, um, I don't think we would have made it. But at first we were like, this is fine. You know, the roads were quite clear. There was snow around and stuff, but it was quite clear. So we thought actually it might be okay, but um, it did get a lot worse actually. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so this was our drive. So this was what it turned into. So the roads were absolutely covered. This is a nice road. This was obviously being cleared, but um, the road was so icy and was just, I, I mean, I, Joe did so well to drive. Um, we had, we were going like 10, 15 miles per hour at some point. Um, so it was really, really sketchy sometimes. And there wasn't a lot of cars there because obviously people had turned back. Um, a lot of the viewpoints and stuff we couldn't see. I mean, you couldn't see anything in front of us. This is all supposed to be mountains and stuff, but we couldn't see anything. Um, so we actually just drove straight up the Icefield Parkway because obviously we're coming back down. So we're hoping that the weather was going to get better and it was due to get better. So we knew we had the opportunity to come back down. So we literally just drove the whole sort of three hours worth of road just straight away. Um, but we did stop um, just to have a bit of a break and stuff like that. But yeah, you can see how snowy it was. However, we did see one of our first bears, um, which was really good. So this, <laughs> he was just sort of walking along the side of the road. It was obviously snowing um, and I took these from the window. So um, we weren't actually this close. We were actually on the other side of the road, um, but my camera can zoom in quite well. So um, it does look like we're quite close, but we're actually on the opposite, opposite side of the road. Um, but it was amazing to see him. Um, he was just sort of skulking along the side of the road and then he went down into the trees. Um, but yeah, that was a really cool um first sighting really that made up for not being able to do anything of the Icefield Parkway um on the way up so then we arrived in Jasper and um it, it started to rain then because it started to warm up a little bit which we were grateful for because we were hoping that it would have um thawed and you know on the way back down we could see a bit more things which we did so um it started to rain when we got to Jasper and it started to clear up a little bit so this was just our hostel and um, we actually stayed the Jasper accommodation is extortionate there's just there's not that many hotels 
and the prices of them are crazy. So we actually stayed in a hostel, um, but we did have a private room and a private bathroom, um, which was really nice. And it was really nice and cozy. Um, and it was really good location as well. So these are just some photos of our accommodation with some business cards. Um, they were actually, they had like a parade going with all like the Canadian um, military. Is that what they are? I'm not sure, but they had like all the red um, out, the red jackets on and the horses and stuff like that. So that was quite cool. Um, and then we just went for a wander around Jasper in the rain just to make the most of it really. Um, this is us with our raincoats and umbrellas. Yeah, we passed the Jasper sign. We just got some pictures um, by the train station, these big totem poles. Um, and it was very pretty, but as I said, this should all be mountains in the background, but you just can't see them because of the, the, the uh, cloud. Um, and then we did, I guess because of the snowstorm and other things, we did actually get an emergency alert on our phone. Um, so it just says experiencing heavy rainfall um, for flooding, snow accumulation and stuff like that. So yeah, not what we expected middle of June. So these are just some pictures of around Jasper. Um, so again, this was actually when the weather was clearing up. So you can finally see some of the mountains in the background. Um, we actually went for tea at this place called Dead Dog. Um, and we had some really nice cozy sort of food. Um, and yeah, some maps. There's a load of maps. I picked up so many maps um, from our hostel. Um, and then these are just some other bits and pieces around Jasper. Again, when the weather had cleared up and you could see the mountains. Uh, we went to the Bears Poor Bakery for breakfast both days. Uh, one of the other meals that we had um, from called something else. Yeah, something else. Steakhouse. And then one of the things we really wanted to do was Moline Canyon. Um, we actually really wanted to do the Moline Lake cruise as well. We did have that booked. However, the road that goes down to the lake um, was shut off due to avalanche warnings. And um, actually people had to go get rescued and stuff like that from there because it was quite dangerous. So uh, they cancelled the cruise as the road was closed. Um, but we did actually get to go to the Moline Canyon, which was really good. Um, so we got some nice photos of around there, but you can definitely see the damage to the trees. Um, a lot of the trees have fallen um, because of the, the weight of the snow that's obviously fallen on them. Um, we were one of the only people to walk around this canyon. <laughs> I can understand why it was very slippery um obviously very sludgy because of the snow but it was still really really pretty but it was all full of bridges basically we had to you know pass by all these different bridges but we walked pretty far um before we got a little bit paranoid that we were gonna greet a bear or something because this area was known for wildlife um, and i don't know whether it's gated at all <laughs> i don't know if um animals can just wander through it or if it's got some sort of barrier around it um but we started to get a bit paranoid because we was on our own um and we thought, hmm, I don't know if we should be out here with no bear spray or anything like that. So we actually ended up playing, playing music on our phone um, because they say that, if you know, to avoid bears coming for you, you want to make noise. You don't want to startle bears. So if you're making noise, um, then they'll go away, basically, because they don't want to come across humans either. So, um, yeah, we got a little bit paranoid halfway down. So we did actually cut it short and come back. Um, but it was a really nice walk. So it was really pretty with a load of waterfalls and obviously the bridges and stuff like that. Um, we just spent the morning there just having to wander around. Again, these are the trees that have fallen we have to sort of go underneath them. Another one at the top there. So, But they had the really uh, pretty birds, the little robins and stuff like that around. So um, yeah, we really enjoyed it. And another map of Jasper. And then we did the Jasper Sky Tram, which was always on our um, itinerary anyway, but we actually moved it um, because we were supposed to be going on the cruise instead. Uh, we had a free morning, so we um, we actually went on the Sky Tram instead um, in that, on that day. Um, so we drove up there. Luckily, it was obviously open and things. The top of it was absolutely covered in snow um, and you couldn't do the full sort of um, hike further up because it was just... It was just, you couldn't even get through it. Um, but we got to see the views and stuff from the top, which was our main sort of, um, I, like, what we wanted to do really. So um, yeah, so it was really steep actually, the um, Sky Tram. So we went up in these little red cable cars um, and got some really good views out the, the window. And this was just the snow at the top there. It was so cold. Um, I Obviously we packed for all sorts of weathers because we knew we were going to be in the mountains and stuff, but I didn't expect snow. <laughs> so we were really cold. We had as many layers as we possibly could. And there's some more pictures of the views at the top there. 
and we actually we were supposed to come down on the 12 on 12 30 but we actually stayed a little bit longer because we really enjoyed the views and we had some lunch up there um as well and then from here we actually decided on our next itinerary uh, because we we're looking down in jasper and seeing what else we could do and we heard in the cable car uh, one of the guides was talking about um this lake here this lake Beauvert, and um she said it was really nice and you can go it goes it's actually you have to go via a hotel to get through it um but it's um a really nice lake to walk around so we decided to do that um and it was so worth it, it was such a nice unexpected thing to do um and these photos were so pretty you, like some of the photos you can't see which way round it is uh, just the reflections of the um the mountains in the water are incredible so yeah a really nice thing to do in the afternoon so some more pictures of the lake. It was just really nice, as I said, the weather cleared up. It was still a little bit chilly, um, but the weather cleared up and you, you know, as I said, it was quite sunny at times and um, it wasn't snowing and it wasn't raining. That was the main thing. And then on our walk, we um, passed some really cute little <laughs> Colombian ground squirrels. They're just so cute. Um, there was all of them in the golf course. And they all stood up at the same time and they just looked so cute. Um, I love them. They're one of my favourite things of Canada. Um, and like where they're all the squirrels and stuff like that as well. So yeah, we had some really nice walks around. And then we went um, for a drive in the afternoon because the best time to view sort of wildlife is late afternoon um, into the evening because obviously it's cooler um, and it's not so, you know, most animals sort of sleep in the day. So um, we actually got to see some more bears and she had some babies with her. Um, so these were really cute. There was three little babies. There were two little brown ones and like a dark brown black one. Um, but again, these look like we're really close. We're not that close. We're actually quite far away in, in a field. that They're far in the field. Um, again, my camera zooms in quite um, well. So yeah, it was just so cute to see all these little babies and obviously the bear um, herself. And yeah, it was definitely worth it. All for that. We were just so happy to see that. And then we just saw some other bits and pieces like these deers, elk and stuff like that. And we thought this was a moose. Um, we were on the hunt for a moose and we thought these were, but they weren't. They were um, one of these ones again. But um, that's the only thing we didn't get to see was a moose and we would have loved to see them. We were really trying um, our hardest to spot them, but they're very hard to spot. Um, and it's it's just luck of the draw, really. We drove around for as much as much as we could in the daylight um to see them but we just yeah it eluded us but it it was amazing to see all these other animals we did get to see some other like smaller animals but we couldn't take a picture of them because they were just so quick <laughs> um but there there was some really cool little like foxes and um you know like the the squirrels and stuff like that so yeah so then we drove the icefield parkway back down <laughs> Um, and we were hoping for a much better drive and we definitely got it. Um, so this is a map of the Icefields Parkway um, and this was a sign. So on the way up, um, luckily it wasn't closed, but it was poor. Um, so this was like red and we were like, oh no. Um, but luckily we could actually get up there. I was worried they were going to close it um, and we wouldn't be able to get up there at all. I'm just so grateful that we did. We got to see Jasper and everything like that. Um, but on the way back down, it was good. So that was always a good sign. When we saw that, we thought, oh, great. Um, you know, we should be able to see a few more things on the way down. So we pretty much stopped at every single one of these. Um, and we stopped every 15, 20 minutes. So it took sort of a whole day, really, to get down there. Um, but it was so worth it. It was definitely the, one of the best drives we've ever done. Um, but this was one of the first stops. This is Athabasca Falls. Um, it was just nice to be able to stop on the side of the road um, and, you know, just have a bit of a wander, stretch your legs and stuff rather than driving constantly. Um, but there were just, yeah, really good um, stops along. So lots of waterfalls. These were Sunwapta Falls. Again, really cool. And you don't have to walk too far for them all. It's not like you've got a hike each time. Um, they're quite close to the car parks and stuff. So, yeah, definitely... Um, Definitely worth getting out of the car as often as you can. And then we actually stopped at this one called Goats and Glaciers, which I'm not sure why it's called that, because there was no goats. And there wasn't many glaciers, but obviously the views of the mountains were amazing here. So we stopped um, stopped here just to have a look out at the, um, the views and stuff. And then we actually had lunch. So we stopped on the side of the road um, 
that we could just sit and have our lunch. So we pre-packed lunch from a supermarket um, and just enjoyed the views and sat there and had lunch in the car, which was really nice. And um, we just, yeah, bought some snacks and stuff. There's nowhere to eat on the Icefield Parkway. There's one place which is halfway um, that sells, that has a restaurant and obviously sells snacks and drinks and stuff. But other than that, there's nowhere else. Um, there isn't even that many toilets or anything like that. So it's um, it's definitely very barren. There's nowhere to get petrol apart from one place. Um, so yeah, it's just worth being prepared for the drive. And then we got to see the big horned sheep. Um, so they were just wandering in the middle of the road, um, but they were really cool. They were licking the salt off the walls actually, um, but they were really cool. They're obviously shedding for the summer. Um, but they were really cool to see and they weren't afraid of the cars or anything. Everyone was just taking photos and yeah, it was really, it was really cool to see those. They're another one of the animals that we wanted to see. And then this was the Columbia ice field. So here you could actually get out and walk on the glacier and there's quite a few people walking on the glacier. Uh, we just stopped to have a look at the glacier and just had a look around. These were some of the best photos that I took whilst on the ice field parkway. I just really love the mountains in the background and obviously the snow. So that was the one good thing about the fact that there was snow was, um, you know, the mountains looked incredible with the snow on top of them. Um, so, yeah, these were just some really, really cool photos of the mountains as we were driving. And as you can see, the roads are really clear. Um, so, yeah, it was nice driving on the way back. And it wasn't that busy either, which was really good. So, yeah, some of the best photos of that. This is a big Jolie's Boutique sticker um, that I love. <laughs> So then this was the Saskatchewan crossing. So this is halfway. So this is it here. Um, so um, Jasper is up here somewhere further up. Um, but yeah, we drove all the way down, obviously all the way down to Banff. Um, so that was really fun. I love this postcard. I picked it up actually at the crossing. But this is the only place that you can get petrol, get some food, snacks and all that sort of stuff. So that's where you sort of top up. So we stopped there for a little bit just to go for, to the bathroom, get some, you know, drinks um and obviously just you know relax a little bit before we set off on the second half um but yeah it was really nice it had some like plaques and things like that you can read about um the Icefield Parkway and um all this sort of surrounding sites um so it's just some pictures of us with the big Canada flag and then we did actually stop at Mistea Canyon to have a look again at the lovely waterfalls and canyons and stuff I do still need to do a little bit of journaling um, in this album, but not too much. So then this was one of my favourite stops. This was Pato Lake, and I'm so happy we got to see it like this. Um, so obviously it was sunny um, and it made the water as blue as it, you know, like crazy blue. So I'm so happy we got to see it as this. Um, I was worried that the snow and stuff was going to make it harder to get up there or we couldn't get there at all. And, you know, sometimes when it's such bad um you know you can't see uh, visibility it was just um you know you can just see nothing so um i was actually on a facebook group about um the canadian rockies and the day that we drove up there someone had stopped and they couldn't see anything so i'm just grateful that we got to see it like this and it was actually one of my favorite lakes i'd say lake moraine was my favorite then Peto, and then lake louise but um i just love it because it's obviously shaped like a wolf um so that looks really cool so yeah, that was definitely one of my favourite stops. And then these are just some pictures of some of the lakes that are closer to Banff. Um, so there's Bow Lake and Hector Lake and stuff like that. So um, they're just really nice um, photos of the mountains with the lakes in the background. And again, we saw some deers on the side of the road. And just enjoying, obviously, the road trip. And then we didn't actually stay in Banff on the way back down. We stayed in Canmore, which is just a bit further along, um, just for the little bit of difference, really, because obviously we've done Banff. Um, so we checked into the Grand Rockies Resort um, in Canmore. This is just a bit, obviously a big map. We actually stayed in the Annex building, which is just off the main building. Um, this was just our key card sort of holder and a little business card in there. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice hotel. Really spacious and the bed was really nice. It was really good location so I really yeah really enjoyed staying there and these are just some pictures of Canmore so I can see the sun was fully shining today um but yeah just some really nice pictures again the mountains looked incredible these are the three sisters um the mountain peaks 
which was really nice. Um, and we just had a wander. I think we got there about late afternoon and we just had a wander around. There was like this um, creek along the river that you got to walk along on these wooden boards and that was really fun. Lots of like birds and ducks and stuff like that. So that was really nice. Um, and we actually went to the Grizzly Paw Brewing Company um, for tea and that was a really good, really good sort of pub that we went to. And this was all like our... Um, this was on the bottom of our tray and then these were wrapped around our knife and forks. So yeah, lots of things that I took from that restaurant. Um, but yeah, really, really good food. And again, some more pictures of Camelot. So we just had a walk around around the town in the morning. We had a little bit of time before we had to set off. Um, so we just walked along the town. We've come across like a little market. Um, we've got some souvenirs and stuff. And obviously this is a big map of Camelot in the background. They had this big head statue, which was kind of freaky. Um, but we saw that and then we just sort of sat in a park for a bit because it was nice and sunny and we just thought we'd sit there and just relax um, and just sort of I think it was a weekend maybe I don't, it might be Friday um, but it was um, really nice just to watch the locals go out and play and I think there was a big school group or you know it was just really nice to see sort of local things this was in a nice church and then this was a um, bag that I obviously bought some souvenirs and stuff in And then we did the walk to the engine bridge, um, which was really fun. Again, really, really scenic um, along the river. Um, we saw some nice squirrels. I just love this, this, this dog library uh, where they had like sticks for the dogs and they can drop them or pick them up. So I think that's really cute. Um, and then this is the actual engine bridge itself. So we've got some nice pictures there. And again, with the, um, the mountains in the background. And then on the way back to Calgary, um, we actually stopped at the Wolf Dog Sanctuary. I'd not seen this, um, but I'd watched a YouTube video and I saw someone stop at it and I thought that's that's really cool. So just to break up our journey back from the Rockies to Calgary, which took about, uh, I think it was about an hour and a half, um, but we stopped here. It was about halfway um, and I just thought it was amazing because I never even knew about Wolf Dogs um so yeah it was really cool so we booked to go there and we just did the basic tour which was a self-guided tour um around the sanctuary so they have different sort of areas that you can go and walk around um and there was like um talks every so often and things so that was really fun so um wolf dogs um are really really interesting i, I still think about them today so humans at some point thought it would be a clever idea to have a half dog half wolf as a pet um thinking that they'll be good at you know um security or you know just sort of trying to get that sort of the elusiveness of a wolf um but the you know the knowledge of a dog basically so um they decided to breed them however they then learned that they're not very good pets because wolves don't like humans <laughs> wolves don't like to be around people and you know they're very shy they're very sort of um lonely animals as such so they soon learned that wolves weren't gonna be a great pet so a lot of them get bred and then they just get deserted um the humans sort of um, decide that they don't want them anymore so this wolf dog sanctuary obviously they take them in they take as many as they can in um, but they have a thing called a low content and a high content wolf dog so obviously a low content is predominantly dog um so there was actually a few wolf dogs here so this this couple here um the girl was i think a low content no i think sorry she was a high content wolf dog so she was mainly wolf um so she was very quiet um but she still you know interacted with the the male but the male was a low content um and he was very much like a labrador basically um he was wagging his tail and he was um you know just being very friendly and stuff you know as you would expect a labrador to do so um the higher content of wolf um is obviously the the rarer you get but um it was so interesting to hear but it's quite sad really that it's a man-made animal that they you know there's absolutely no reason why they had to do it um but um they are really really lovely so i'm glad they're being looked after um even though you know it's a questionable sort of thing for humans to do but they had loads they had absolutely loads in there and obviously they're all being looked after um they don't obviously they would never breed them they'll look after them until they're 
you know they pass away and things um they won't be let back out into the wild because because they're half dog and um, a lot of them are low content wolves uh the dogs won't they you know they still want human contact and stuff so um they're they're quite happy being um in captivity but yeah it was just so interesting highly recommend going um i just think it's fascinating actually but it was so cool because they got them all to howl um, they started one howl and they all started to howl around the whole enclosures. Um, so, yeah, it was really good. And as I said, they did talks and stuff and they're feeding them and things. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend. It's just so interesting to hear about them. Um, and then they did have some other animals there as well. Um, so they actually had this goat, the goat pen um, that had two dogs in there, actually. Um, but you could actually feed them, which was really nice. And there's some chickens and stuff like that. Um, so we did actually buy some feed to feed the goats and this is them um, obviously getting very excited over us feeding them um but yeah you know, it was a really really cool afternoon we only spent about two three hours there but again it was just so fascinating i'd never heard of a wolf dog before and their background to them um so yeah it's just really nice that they're being supported and obviously um when you know they get abandoned this place will go out and get them and look after them and stuff so um they're just incredible but yeah crazy what humans will do um but then we went home so the next day we flew from calgary back to london gatwick um it was a night flight so i think we set off at half past five and um, we were due home at about nine o'clock in the morning um but yeah so we dropped our car back and we stayed at this um hotel <clears throat> i can't think what it's called now um but it was one of the like a best western i think it was um, and yeah, we stayed there, really nice big rooms, but it's one of those hotels in the middle of a big junction. So instead of getting the car, we sort of ended up walking across these huge roads um, to get something to eat and things. But um, yeah, no, it was really nice. We had a really good um, trip. It was just amazing. Obviously, we did so much in the two weeks that we were there and um, it was one of our favourite trips we've ever done. So we will hopefully get to do something a bit like this again. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed all three of these albums and I will be back with another flip through, but I'm actually going to sort of not put a break on my travel scrapbooks, but I'm going to catch up on my wedding prep album now um, because I get married in six weeks time and I sort of want to get that album sorted and done and dusted by the time I get married. So then when I get married, it's done. So I'm going to do that. I don't want to be doing it after the wedding. Um, so I'm going to do my wedding prep album. So that's ready um for when i get married and then i'll be carrying on with my travel scrapbooks then so i hope you enjoyed this and i will be back shortly with another video thank you very much bye